But first, it was quite the week on Wall Street, record setting across the board. White House Trade Advisor Peter Navarro is joining me right now to talk about the impact of the historic week that was the signing of the Phase One China trade deal, as well as USMCA passing the Senate. Peter Navarro, thanks so much for being with me this weekend. Hey, great to be with you, Maria. What a what a week of history! It's been an incredible of amazing week. stuff. And and of course, it looks like the week ahead is going to be historic as well. Let's talk about what you got done, you and your colleagues at in the trade office at the White House. We saw USMCA pass the Senate. That is headed to the president's desk. We're expecting that to to, to be signed into law this upcoming week. And then there's the China deal. Go through the U.S.-China trade deal, Peter, and. Tell us what's most important. What we have in the uh, China deal uh, is some really strong provisions for in against intellectual property theft, a really good start on forced technology transfer, and uh, there's a provision on currency manipulation. So those are three of what I've referred to as the seven deadly structural sins of China. And so it's a very good start. And over and above that, as I seen on the cake, uh, and a real fiscal stimulus for uh, the um, uh, 2020 economy. We've got uh, government purchases of Ch from China of about $200 billion worth of goods over and above the 2017 benchmark. And I stress that it's over and above what they bought in 2017. It's agriculture, it's energy. Uh, manufacturing and services. Uh, and then finally, something that's been a, a white whale on Wall Street for many, many years, uh, financial market access for insurance companies, credit cards, uh, companies and banks. So, so that's, um, you know, that's a, a solid start to a phase one deal. The centerpiece of it, Maria, um, is a really strong 90-day clock enforcement mechanism which provides actually unilateral authority to the United States uh, to take actions if, uh, if there's issues. And, and that's, uh, that's really pathbreaking in and of itself. Yeah, I, I think everything that you say is obviously what the market was reacting to this week and one of the reasons that we saw all the record highs. But I want to I talk to you about some of these issues because uh, there's one firm, Cornerstone Macro, which has raised the red flag on the China deal. And here's what the uh, analyst there nice, writes. Nice pun there, by the way. <laughs> yeah, that's true. He says, the purchases are very difficult to track, and I continue to believe fuzzy math. Uh, is is uh, sure to be at work here. The ag purchases way below advertised, and the enforcement mechanism is exactly what we wrote about, and that is toothless. He's calling it toothless <laughs> at Cornerstone Macro. Uh, now, you and I have spoken yeah. in the past about how the Chinese have lied and not kept promises in the past. How are you going to keep them to their promise to buy all of these products, $200 billion over the next two years? You said it was 40 to $50 billion in buying of agricultural products? Uh, well, let, let's start with this toothless enforcement mechanism. That's just a fiction. I mean, let's let's look at it really carefully. Uh, if there's an issue, comes to Robert Lighthizer or USTR, and within 90 days, uh, that's adjudicated with the Chinese. If we don't like the result, we get to take proportionate measures, which will typically mean snapback tariffs. So I, I don't, you know, I, I don't know what planet this person is living on who did the analysis. Uh, but that's but that's did the Chinese just have to agree? Wrong. Is this a, is this an agreement they, on both they sides? Signed, the Chinese have they to agree that you're going to snap back the tariffs. They signed a deal in English and Chinese that says yes, we can do that, and they cannot retaliate. Okay. Their only option is to leave the deal. So that's just that's, that's just plain nonsense. Okay, so let's look at. Um, the, the monitoring of the agreement itself. I mean, the, the president, uh, what I love about Donald J. Trump is he skates like Gretzky to where the puck's going to be. And so many months ago, part of my job was to develop adequate monitoring mechanisms for enforcement. So with agriculture, I mean, that's <laughs> that's pretty easy. I mean, Sonny Perdue, the Secretary of Agriculture, is all over that. I and mean, we, we know if they're buying or not. The idea that we wouldn't know that is just silly. But there's other things. Um, 
intellectual property theft, the, the purest expression of that, Maria, is counterfeiting. And China is the world's largest counterfeiter of goods. They inundate this country with counterfeits. And I've, I've uh, worked with Customs and Border Protection over the last year. Yep. And beginning in July, we put in place once a month monitoring of packages from China. We've benchmarked that. And in the, <laughs> the scary part here is that about 15% of the packages that, uh, that are coming in that we're checking are contraband. I mean, think wow. about that. 15%. 15 about half of that is counterfeits, uh, fake uh, sneakers, uh, Rolex watches, prescription drugs that can kill you, by the way. Uh, the other half is uh, things like controlled substance, like deadly fentanyl. Oh my God. And so we're benchmarking that every month. In fact, as, as uh, the weekend uh, goes on, uh, Customs and Border Protection is running another operation, Megaflex, as we speak. So we're going to know on a month-to-month -month basis whether that flow of counterfeits is coming down. And if it's not, we're going to crack down. And that's good news for intellectual property rights holders. I mean, you have very big companies, uh, whether it's a Pfizer or Genentech selling prescription drugs, yep. or, or whether it's Louis Vuitton, Michael Kors. This is great news for American companies on the stock exchanges mm. who have been getting ripped off through intellectual property theft. Let's talk USMCA yeah. passing the Senate. When do you expect the president to sign that into law? Impact on USMCA. And you were right on this market. You predicted when back in Ju last July, July that yes. the Dow would hit 30,000. Here we are sitting in the neighborhood uh, reaching 29,000 for the first time this week after the Senate passed the USMCA and the China signing. Yeah, big picture, it's twice the volume of trade as the China deal, five times the amount of exports. It's a much bigger deal that will uh, basically entrench the United States and North America as the manufacturing hub of the world, particularly for auto manufacturing. So, the president will have 10 days to sign this. Um, I, I, we'd love to do a, a trip somewhere to do that, uh, time permitting, uh, and so that's going to be great. It's great for our farmers. I mean, dairy farmers in Wisconsin will finally be able to scale the great walls of Canadian protectionism. Uh, the wheat farmers, it, that's great, but, but really the, the guts of this um, is uh, Detroit as the center of auto manufacturing because of the domestic content rules. Uh, that, that Main Street loves and apparently the Wall Street Journal always hates. And we've got an impeachment uh, trial starting in this upcoming week. His critics are not really focused on the fundamentals of this economy, that's for sure. Peter, it's good to see Clearly you this weekend. Thank, Thank you so much. Peter Navarro, thanks so much.